What do we mean in terms of risk pertaining to capital budgeting? It just means what is the probability and what are the range of variability of this particular project making money? Remember, we like to look at risk and return. Return being measured by things we just looked at, NPV, IRR, MIRR, etc. But risk is something different. It's like, what is the probability of it happening? And on the downside, what is the probability of things going badly? Let's now move into three different risks that we're going to look at. First is their standalone risk, which is just at the project level. And this is something we can model here. And this is kind of normal, like what can go wrong, right? Or what can go right, I suppose, if you're optimistic. Second is corporate risk, which is what is the impact of this particular project on the company's risk? And finally, market or beta risk is what is the measure of this impact on the stock price of the company, which shows its beta. Uh, standalone is very narrow, it's just the project. Company is a little bit wider. What does the outcome of this project affect the outcome of the company as a whole? And the third is the bigger picture at the market level. What impact does this project have on the market variability and therefore the expected return from this company by its equity providers? So standalone, we use our old friend, the distribution curve. We have an expected value and we have a distribution. We measure that with standard deviations and we measure the, um, the return based on some measure like NPV, IRR, etc. Next is corporate risk. So this is where we have the firm as this dark dashed line. We have the rest of the firm with the, with the lighter dashed line and we see project X. And so this uh, dramatizes the example of where project X could have high impact on the company's uh, project. However, in this example, notice that when the peak occurs for project X is when the firm is on a downstroke. And also when the project X is at the trough, the company's at a high. So in this particular case, it will actually reduce the variability of the profits of the company in this particular case. This project has negative correlation and therefore diversification benefits to the corporation. Market risk is this is the impact on beta. So if we have a well diversified portfolio of projects within the company, then there should be fairly minimal impact on the beta or the variability to shareholders. All right, let's start looking at some specific tools that we use to evaluate risk. The first is sensitivity analysis, and only used one of all, and says which variable has the biggest impact on the desired outcome. So it just means we take one at a time and we change the assumption for the key assumptions that drive the model. In this particular case, we're going to look at the horizontal axis here being the base versus changes, vertical axis being the NPV, the desired end result. And we're going to have three different assumptions that we're going to test. One is the, the rate, the second is the sales, and the third is the salvage. And so when we change the rate by a negative 30%, what happens to the NPV? As we change the unit sales by negative 30%, what is the impact on NPV? Probably very devastating, right? And finally, if we change the salvage value by 30%, what's the impact in an NPV? Well, salvage value is at the very end of the life of the asset, pretty small. So when we look at the results, it's what we would expect, that the lower the discount rate, the higher the NPV. And so our base is here. And so as we vary, there is some variability of NPV, but frankly, not a lot. Same with salvage. Salvage value moving around, whether it's minus 30 or plus 30, there's a pretty small impact on NPV. In other words, it's not very sensitive at all to this assumption. But look at this. If we change our assumptions of sales by negative 30 to plus 30, we have this very steep and dramatic curve on NPV. So conclusion here, one you probably didn't even need this analysis to tell you, is that the most critical assumption to get right is unit sales. Next is some observations. So it gives us a view of standalone risk. It also identifies the dangerous variables or the ones that are not most impactful. And it gives us a little bit of break even as we kind of show the interaction of a couple of different assumptions. There are some weaknesses of this. First, it doesn't reflect anything about diversification of the project. Secondly, there's no probabilities here. 
in that prior example, we just said, what if it was negative 30% or what if it was positive 30% without really knowing the probabilities of that even occurring. So that's probably, in my opinion, the, the weakest aspect of sensitivity analysis. And the other thing is that it's standalone. It's taking rate independent of a change in sales. It's taking unit sales independent of the discount rate or any other variable. And we know that there are interactions. So this is okay, it's useful, but it has its flaws.